Greetings, my friend. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for joining me for a thank you yoga break. My name is Aaron Cezuric, among other things. I am a 200-hour registered yoga teacher. I teach at the Niles Gerard Yoga Room at a recovery center and some chair yoga at a nursing home. Uh, in this series, I wish to bring you my experiences of some of the poses that I do in my personal practice. This one in particular is Thank You Yoga for Upward Lotus Pose in Headstand or Urdhva, Urdhva Padmasana in Sursasana. Okay, so... With that, I would like to give um, some background, some personal background and why I think the pose is nice to explore. I think that is very meaningful if I'm making these videos to present. It's an honest feeling about why the pose is worth, worth undergoing. So, for this pose, I feel that I am brought to um, a state of wonderful attention about spinal alignment. I get to think very thoughtfully and carefully if I have a nice straight posture. I also feel grounded as well as exhilarated at the same time. It's interesting to see how these two feelings can overlap and intermingle with each other because sometimes, at least from my perspective, they seem a bit um, at opposite ends of the spectrum. But relaxation and awareness are brought together in yoga, just like yoga is um, meant to yoke the, the body, the mind, and the soul together is one harmonious entity existing within us to bring us to better peace and happiness. There is a lot of opposites that are brought together into harmony, and I feel this pose really helps do that for the feelings of groundedness and energy or exhilaration. And I feel a sense of accomplishment within this pose because for me this pose is one of the more difficult ones to perform in my personal practice. And this leads me to a sense of peace, um, a sense of peace that things are, are accomplished. They are at a point where I can allow my mind to rest and to just be, and that I don't have to keep striving or achieving and of course that does not necessarily you have to mean that you have to do this pose or you have to win the lottery or um, become valid victorian or something like that really the journey to self peace is an individual one so some people may need those things in their life to find peace but peace is open and accessible to everyone. It's just a matter of finding our pathway to peace. So mine is through this pose and maybe it might be your pathway as well. That's up to you to decide. Everybody's journey is their own and it's important to explore it honestly and with one's heart open and receptive to whatever is offered in life because those are our guideposts and I am very crisp and clear mentally when I do this pose. <laughs> it takes a lot of attention and care to make sure that I am not going to endanger myself within the pose. And my ability to balance and to remain calm under this, this uh, test of kind of extremes, this extreme movement within balancing on my head really does 
help bring me to this sense of balance, maybe unequaled balance for me. Um, of course, again, everybody's experience is their own. And now that I have talked a little bit about my experience within the pose, I would like to um, give some insight on to cautions and contradictions. So reasons why this pose might not be the best pose for you to study, to take part in. Um, so one is back injury. We have headache, heart condition, high blood pressure, menstruation, neck injury, low blood pressure. So it's noted that you should not start the pose. If you do have low blood pressure, pregnancy, it's not a good idea to try this pose. Um, you can practice it until late pregnancy. If you are experienced, if you're knowledgeable enough to uh, do so, but you should never start practicing any Sursasana variation while in pregnancy. It needs some experience first, and then there is a point when you should stop practicing. So ankle and knee injuries are a contradiction as well. Uh, because it does involve an extreme hip opener that does um, require that you concentrate on opening the hips instead of aligning the knees in a unhealthy way. Um, also, it does put some pressure on the ankles quite a bit because they are overlapping in such a way that they are pushing each other, uh, pushing against each other. So those are the contradictions because of the lotus pose within the headstand. And also this pose is considered intermediate to advanced, so keep that in mind. Respect the practice, also respect yourself. And if you are um, wanting to explore this pose and aren't quite confident, make sure that you seek a teacher who has experience. Um, if you want to explore it on your own, make sure that you are very thorough with your preparations, exploring other postures that would lead up to this posture, both in lotus and in headstand. There are several uh, wonderful preparatory poses that I will explore, hopefully, in later videos. Okay, and so another, another really helpful tip that I find is to have as much space around you as you can. If possible, have a full body's length in all directions of the balancing point, the point on which you're going to um, stand on your head, because that way if the body tips over in any direction, it will not collide into an object. And this is perhaps the number one injury um, within headstand in its variations, is just falling on objects that um, cause an, a um, injury within the body because there isn't a nice um, level surface below. All right, and I also would like to give some insights on um, why BKS Iyengar thinks this variation as well as lotus and headstand are, are beneficial and effective practices to help um, us into our healthiest, happiest form. Okay, so BKS Iyengar, if you don't know, he is a yoga guru who has since transitioned a little while ago. Um, he is world-renowned, and he is 
uh, responsible for bringing a lot of foundation to the West as far as the physical practices and benefits of yoga. Um, yoga has gone in years recent, so he is a very good guru to study if the physical practices do intrigue you and seem beneficial for you. Okay, so these are found, well, not all of them, but the benefits for um, Urdhva Padmasana and Sursasana or Upward Lotus Pose and Headstand are found in his book, Light on Yoga, page 203. So this posture gives an extra pull to the dorsal region. And consequently, the chest is fully expanded and blood circulates properly in the pelvic area. Um, so it really helps um, bring health to these areas of the body, uh, also full breath. And to give a little reminder about the benefits in Sursasana and Padmasana, I kind of summarize them. So this includes a good spinal alignment, increased attention and alertness. Um, it cures stiffness in the knees and ankles. It tones the spine and abdominal organs. In Sursasana, there is a healthy and pure blood flow throughout to the brain. It helps with alertness and clarity. Resilience from colds, coughs, tonsillitis, halitosis, and foul breath, as well as palpitations. It warms the body and helps relieve constipation. Okay, very good. All of that sounds really wonderful, So, um, but this pose has to be undertaken with a mind of uh, safety and awareness of what's happening and what you are feeling in the body, what you are feeling in the balance. Don't feel um, you should proceed if there is a um, red flag of warning going on. Just go ahead and come out of the pose and try again next time. For me, what I do is I try three times. If by the third time I don't seem to be uh, the pose doesn't seem to be right from the day, I'll save it till the next day and explore it then. I like that rule of three is like the mind, the spirit, and the body. So let's go ahead and try to unite these aspects of ourselves through Urdhva, Padmasana, and Sursasana, or upward lotus pose and headstand, okay? And straighten the legs out. And before we move into lotus pose, before we move into Padmasana, we'll go ahead and do fire log once again as a warm-up to help open up our hips to make the lotus pose a little safer to get into, especially if we have tight hips, okay? So... Agnastam Hasana, here we go. All right, so first what we'll do is we'll go ahead and bend the right leg so that the ankle is on the ground and the uh, sole of the foot is pointing to the left direction. And then we'll bend the left leg and set it over top of the right foot and begin to welcome a nice straight posture as this will help us better align in the pose and better align with a hip opening to deepen that experience. And then to increase the hip opening, we'll go ahead and we'll move into a forward fold. Okay. So once in the forward fold, we can stretch the arms out like so. All right. We can stay here for a time. I usually... Um, count to myself about 10 seconds. And 
then when we feel we're ready, we can go ahead and um, open a little bit further if we would like. We can fold a little bit to the right side and place the left hand and left thumb in that knee crease and kind of pull the left thigh a little bit towards the outside, the inner thigh towards the outside and remain here for maybe about 10 more seconds. And then when we feel we have reached that, we can go ahead, come back up to a nice straight back, and we can go ahead and reverse it, okay? All right, so allowing the left leg to be the bottom leg, so the sole is pointed to the right, and then stacking the bent right or yeah, right leg on top of the left leg so that the ankle is on the knee, taking that nice straight posture to help begin alignment in the toes, to help open the hips up a little further, and then folding forward. Remaining about 10 seconds here. And always reminding ourselves that breathing in postures can really help us deepen and enjoy the experience. And when we're ready, folding a little bit more to the left, placing the right hand, thumb in that knee crease area, and pulling the right thigh a little bit outward towards the outer right to help deepen the hip opening on the right side, remaining here about 10 minutes, or 10, 10 minutes, 10 seconds. All right, very good. And then when ready, coming up to that nice neutral straight back okay and from here we'll go ahead and we'll begin to move into lotus pose okay so moving the right leg up straightening the legs always taking care to move nice and intentionally with ease not a jolty action, so we're taking care of the knees, learning to be careful, be kind to the knees. Because although lotus pose is a wonderful pose, if we move it... So first, what we'll do, after we have enough adequate space... Oh, I might add that I like to wear um, thin then uh, pants um, because it does help when I am trying to navigate my legs into the right position. And as I'm doing this um, in a way that I can't see with my eyes, it takes a lot more feeling, um, feeling the overlapping as it happens within the body. So I've noticed it is helpful to have thinner um, pants. It just seems to help the um, legs kind of slide into place a little bit more. And with the thicker pants, more cumbersome pants, the um, maybe it's the heels kind of get stuck on the fabric. So let's go ahead and move into the pose, okay? So first we'll go ahead and get onto all fours. And once into all fours, we will move into Sursasana, okay? 
Okay. So we'll place the head down, we'll come up with the legs. Now this variation is Salamba Sursasana. So we'll go ahead and press the forearms down and unite the hands in the back of the head. All right. We'll come up on the toes and we'll raise the legs up. And for me, it is always good to try to align the spine as much as possible within Sursasana before proceeding any further. Um, this helps with confidence, stability in the body, okay? And once you have done that, then you can begin to move into the lotus position. I start with my right leg first. It comes down. I put my um, kind of the side of my foot in that left thigh. And I begin to turn the left leg out, okay? And then gradually kind of helping that into place over top the right leg. All right, and once this feels like you have been here long enough, I invite you to regain your alignment and regular sursasana. Okay, you may take a break here if you need to. Otherwise, you can move into the other side. So this time, it's the left leg that comes in first. And then the right leg comes over top. All right, and once you've been in here long enough, I invite you to find that alignment once again. And you come back down out of the pose, dropping the legs, coming into all fours. Okay. And then maybe sitting on the heels. Taking in some nice healthy breaths. Maybe moving the head back and forth. Rotating. Okay. If the knees feel a little odd, like they may need to be realigned, go ahead and take forward fold, reaching arms up, hinging at the hips, legs straight and folding forward to your own degree. Sometimes it's just nice to do. Our legs might not be particularly in need of alignment, but I find that my legs are always relieved after lotus pose when taking a nice forward fold. And 
Very good. If you have other poses, I invite you to continue on with your sequence. Otherwise, I invite you to either take a laying pose or a seated pose. Okay. So check your alignment with your spine. Maybe take a nice inhale and exhale. Maybe take some time to be thankful, to be grateful for your body as it's carried you through this practice, it carries you through so much of life. It's there for you to help you move in and out of different situations. Taking some time to be grateful for the surface below the ground, always supporting you as you do journey and transition to one situation and another throughout life, providing you with a safety and groundedness, a security. And then thanking also for the vital breath, the vital breath which grants us all these possibilities in life, which makes it possible for the journey which makes it possible for wonderful practices like yoga and whatever else that we enjoy in our lives. Without the breath, it wouldn't be possible to enjoy these experiences. So thankful for the body, the ground below, and the vital breath. Also thankful for the humility of the mind, of the ego, humbling itself, so that we might take part in practices that can, can move us beyond being stuck, being stuck in our individual's desires. The things that I have noticed through my own life experience can easily make life stale, make life boring and stagnant and just in wanting more and more, never finding satisfaction, thanking the mind for humility, for conceding its selfish desire, for allowing us some space to practice these more inclusive more inclusive practices in life that help unite all living beings into one healthy, harmonious entity, one healthy, harmonious body that is moving towards greater health and greater happiness. One good practice at a time. So thank you so much for being here, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for being a participant of this thank you yoga break. I do hope that you enjoyed the exploration. I know I was a little concerned that I might not be able to demonstrate this pose without um, quite a bit of difficulty, but it actually went pretty well, I do think. I hope you think it did as well. So thank you, my friend. God bless you, and namaste. You have a wonderful day, okay?